Well, hello and welcome, amazing parents, to our brand new series, Fearless First Parents. Now, if you are not a first parent, maybe you're expecting a second child or you have a child that's maybe a year or two old, uh, this course is still going to impact you greatly. In fact, if you already have a child, you'll under, you'll probably get more out of this because you have some hands-on experience that you can relate to and you know that the struggle is real and you know what the struggles are in raising a child. And so um, this isn't just for brand new parents, although it was designed with that in mind. It has a broader application. So in this series, you're going to be equipped with information and tools that I don't believe you're going to find anywhere else, at least all in one place. And it truly is a game changer and it's going to make your life so much easier. <clears throat> you know, I have a a motto that you either pay now or pay later, which really isn't my motto. It's it's kind of a life principle, right? And it always costs more to pay later, you know, because there's interest added. So uh, it's the same with parenting. If you uh, in, invest, which you already are, in learning some skills when your child is young, it's going to save you so much trouble later. And we'll learn more about why that's actually true uh, when it comes to parenting as we go along this course. So I want to keep these videos short <clears throat> because I know you're busy and uh, with your baby or getting ready for baby. So um, uh, let's just get started on this first lesson. So in this first lesson, I want to talk about the goal of parenting. And most of us don't think about what the goal is when we're expecting a child. We're just trying to get ready to take care of a new baby. We're not thinking about the bigger picture per se. It's it's a big enough picture when you're bringing a new life into your world, especially if it's the first time. So <clears throat> that's what I want to talk about because nobody's talking about that, <laughs> especially at this point in your life. So the goal of parenting, what is it? Have you ever thought about it? I'm just going to look at my notes here so I stay on track and get done quickly. Uh, so most people don't think about that. But without a goal in mind, you're just reactive parenting. You're just res res responding or reacting to whatever is going on in your infant's life at the moment, right? They cry, so you figure out why they're crying. You know, they need a diaper change, so you change your diaper and all those sort of things. And we may do some proactive things when it comes to um, like development, like we want to make sure they have the opportunities to um, physically uh, exercise the things, the stages they need to go through as an infant, um, and we, we want to make sure we feed them properly and healthcare and all that. But that's not what this video is about because there's tons of information on that out there. But what we're going to focus on in this series is the emotional and spiritual development of your child. Because those are the foundations of his life. Yes, he needs a healthy body to exist. But uh, the goal of parenting is to create the whole person. And we'll talk more specifically about what that means as we go along. So when you, when you define a goal and you understand what you're working towards, then your parenting becomes proactive because you're initiating and you're um, <clears throat> focused on where you want to go. And the reality is God always initiates. And so if we want to parent like God, then we have to be the initiators, um, not responders. So I'm not saying as a parent you don't respond to your baby's needs, you certainly do, but there's more to it than that. That's what I'm saying. So, but what is the goal? You know, I, I think if you ask most people, what is the goal of raising a child? We would still kind of been thinking of children and what they need to learn. Not so much a quote unquote finished adult, but I think most people would, would probably say, well, we need to teach our kids right and wrong. I don't know, maybe, is that what came to your mind if I asked you what's the goal of parenting? That's what we're going to talk about in this video because I think as Christians, that's the main focus we have. We think we've got to teach our kids right and wrong. They've got this sinful nature and we need to make sure we, you know, rid them of that and steer them in the right direction. <clears throat> and all of this is kind of true, but uh, we're going to investigate this some more in this, in this video. Um... So Jesus gave us a little bit of a clue in Matthew 19, 14, uh, as far as maybe what the goal of parenting is. <coughs> and 
And um, he said, let the little children come to me. Uh, hinder them not, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of heaven. And so there's a lot in there, uh, if we kind of stop and think about it. First of all, he said little children. And so a baby is the littlest of little children. So I think that it would apply to them. And then it says, do not hinder them. What? How could we hinder them? You know, we think of that in the context, I think of the story where, you know, the children are trying to physically come see Jesus and the apostles were physically trying to keep them away from Jesus because they felt like that they would, you know, be distractive. Like we think of children now in church, we put them in the nursery, right? So they don't distract from the message. So that I think there was more to this hindering than just the physical aspect of what was going on in that original scene from the Bible. In fact, we all probably know that there's many layers of meaning to every scripture. And so uh, from a spiritual perspective, uh, I believe that's the more important is do not hinder them. He's not saying don't, don't keep them away from church. He's saying don't keep them away from knowing me and coming to me in a spiritual sense. And so, of course, no Christian parent will want to do that. But um, the reality is <clears throat> we are doing that. Um, and we're doing it unknowingly. So, um, you know, we have to look at the results, okay? And the results of Christian parenting in America today say that two out of three children raised in Christian homes are walking away from the faith as young adults. So when you look at the results of our raising them, you know, we raise them to be adults. And now two out of three of these that are raised in Christian homes are walking away. So we have to say we are not raising them to love, know and love God and serve him. And that's, you know, I would say probably our goal, right? We, we want them to know and love God, right? And so, <clears throat> so what the way we're going about it is causing a problem. Now we can't blame this on church, but in a sense, well, let's don't go there right now. Um, but the statistic itself tells us where the problem is. It says raised in Christian homes. It doesn't say two out of three children who go to church, you know, so many, so many percentages of Sundays of their life. It says raised in Christian homes. So they're just looking at kids. They may or may not even go to church. <clears throat> they're raised in a Christian home. So the Christian home is not producing the results that we would want. So we need to take a look at this. And the church has tried to address the statistics. But again, the problem isn't so much in the church as it is in the home, although they are connected. And we'll see that in just a minute. So the third thing this verse is telling us, uh, Matthew 19, 14, first he says, do not let the, do, uh, let the little children come to me. So he's saying that little children can come to him. <clears throat> and then he's saying, do not hinder them. And then he's saying, for to such as these belong the kingdom of heaven. And so he's, he's equating those who possess the kingdom to be like little children. There's another verse uh, that address, directly uh, addresses that concept that we'll talk about in the next lesson where uh, in Matthew 18, 3, where Jesus said, said um, that you must become like a little child to enter the kingdom of heaven. So, um, <clears throat> but for now, let's, let's um, think about what is it that we could do if we're raising our children in a Christian home, we want them to come to Jesus, how could we hinder them? And so, you know, I already sh showed you with the statistic that there's something we're doing that's hindering them. And it is a very real, very definable, and a very big deal. It's something that we've been doing that we didn't even know we were doing. And I discovered this um, when the Lord called me to mentor parents and specifically told me to write a book, which nowadays a book is a video <laughs> for young parents anyway, but told me to address uh, parenting in the church. Uh, because prior to that, I didn't want anything to do with it. I felt like there was very strong uh, centuries old paradigms about parenting in the church. And there are. And I just felt like it was too big of a problem and I didn't really, I had enough to deal with. But uh, the Lord specifically through a personal experience um, impressed upon me that, that he, he, he was calling me to do that. So that's why I'm in front of you today. Um, I'm addressing <laughs> the, uh, the issue of parenting in the church. 
And so when the Lord called me to do this, which was about six years ago now, the recording of this video, I said to the Lord, okay, Lord, well, you're going to have to show me in the scriptures what it really says about parenting, because I see the way Christians are parenting their children, and it doesn't jive with how I know that you are. And if you think about it, God is the only perfect parent. He is our model for perfect parenting. He's our heavenly father. He's our parent. And so a little bit of a backstory on that is that I didn't get saved till I was 34 and I already had five kids and I had learned to parent peacefully and engage their cooperation easily through uh, classes I took at the YMCA, just purely secular, non-Christian, um, very effective, peaceful parenting methods. And, when, and I took that class as a very young parent when my oldest daughter was a year and a half old. <clears throat> and I realized that you know, when I when I came home from the very first parenting class I ever took at like 21 years old, maybe. Um, I had her when I was 19 and a half. And so um, I came home that very first day with tools that got me different results, the results I wanted. And prior to that, she was running my life and I, nothing I did was changing that. And so I realized at that moment that two things. I realized, number one, I was... I was creating the results I was getting. And, and number two, it, that it wasn't my daughter that needed training as much as it was me. I needed to learn how to engage her in a way that made sense to her. And we're gonna learn more about that in this course as well, about how your child is wired because we're interacting with them as if they think like adults, like we do, and they don't. They're, they have a completely different way of processing information and that's a good thing. God wired them that way to make it easier for us to train them in the way they should go. But because we haven't understood that, uh, we've been really creating the problem and butting, butting heads and creating the resistance in our children instead of cooperation. And you're going to learn all about that in this series. It's so exciting and it's so powerful. I'm sure you can tell by my excitement that I just get so excited about sharing this with parents because it is such a game changer and it's so powerful. <clears throat> so as I, as I, you know, when the Lord called me then to mentor parents, I had gotten saved. I, or I had had five children by that point and my, I had read all sorts of parent, parenting material after that first class because I was just astonished at how powerful th these simple things I'd learned in my very first parenting class were. And I wanted to learn everything I could. And this was long before the internet. My oldest daughter is in her 40s and I won't say the number because she may be watching. And uh, anyway, and so so um, I didn't have the internet to where we have information overload and we can look up anything we want and get all sorts of experts and non-experts and opinions. And it's really difficult, I would say now as a parent because of that, because you can get so much different, so many different opinions and there's just, it's, it's just too much to digest. And so, but sadly in the Christian genre of parenting, it's very uh, limited and very mm, uh, unenlightened, <laughs> I'll just put it that way. It, it's, it's very minimal information that we get about parenting, really, if you think about it as Christians, you know, we're taught spare the rod and spoil the child and that's about it, right? So, um, so anyway, so I said, Lord, you're going to have to show me in the scriptures uh, what it really says about parenting, because I know I learned to parent my children way different than I see Christians parenting. So when I got saved and I began being exposed to Christian parenting, I was kind of appalled and shocked that the overbearing, domineering, controlling way that Christians were parenting their children. And um, at the time, you know, that was many years ago. I, I didn't want anything to do with it. I just went about my business and, and, and you know, that was their business and I had mine. But then, as I said, about six years ago, the Lord specifically said, I want you to address parenting in the church. So I said, okay, God, I, I'll do it, but you're going to have to show me in your word what it really says about parenting. And so I began studying the word. And I said, God, there's really not much here about parenting. And it's such an important topic. And the Lord literally laughed. I think I heard him laugh. And he said, Amy, the whole book is a parenting book because it's about your heavenly father and how he deals with his children. And that alone kind of opens our eyes to look at our children in a different life. For example, just basic Christian principles like treating others the way we want to be treated. Well, 
we, our children are not exempt from that. The golden rule of Christianity, right? That's what Jesus came. He was, he was, a, he was the prophet of peace, the king of peace. He's called the king of peace. And so, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're this domineering type of Christian parenting is, is not, it, it, it's, it's a conquering type, <laughs> not a peaceful, engaging, you know, kind of we're on the same page. You, your value is equal to mine, which is true. A child has no less value in God's eyes than you and I do. In fact, they probably have more when we look at these scriptures that Jesus says about children because he's, he's continually saying that you got to become like a little child. He doesn't tell them to become like an adult. He says, become like a little child if you want to enter the kingdom or, you know, to such as these belong the kingdom. So children possess an innate quality that qualifies them for the kingdom of God. And so <clears throat> we can learn some things from children. But as I was studying the scriptures, the Lord took me all the way back to the book of Genesis. And, you know, honestly, what I've discovered is if you want to sort out any problem, not even a doctrinal Christian doctrinal problem, go back to where it, it broke, you know, where it went wrong. And so when we look at um, any doctrinal issues, we really do need to go back to the beginning because what happened in the garden there and those two trees in the center of the garden, those will sort out any question you have about doctrinal issues. So he, that's where the Lord took me. He said, I want you to go back and read about the trees in the center of the garden. And I said, okay, Lord, but I don't know what I'm going to find there about parenting. Well, I was in for a huge surprise and an incredible revelation that turns everything we know about Christian parenting on its head. And rightfully so in light of the st statistic that I already quoted about two out of three children walking away, yada, yada. So, so I'm reading along and I come to Genesis 2 17 that says, and of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day you eat of it, you will die. And I'd read that passage many, many times. And I'd heard the name of that tree many times and it never made any sense to me. I thought, what is this long, strange name and what does it mean? Well, in the context of parenting, the name of that tree that the Lord told them not to eat from lit up like a billboard and probably because the Lord wanted me, wanted to show me this. And so as I read, and of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I stopped and I was like, what? What? The knowledge of good and evil? Knowing right and wrong, that's what caused the downfall of the entire human race? Well, I thought to myself, that's what we're teaching our kids, to know right and wrong. And we think that that will cause them to choose right. But God is saying right here in this passage that that knowledge was, was, was the poison fruit that, that led to death. And he said, in the day you eat of it, you will die. So something died that day. And as I studied this out, I realized what it was. Adam and Eve died spiritually. Their spiritual eyes were closed. And then it says, and the, if you keep reading, and the eyes of their understanding, their human understanding were awakened. Well, that was their sin nature. So what happened was they were, they were, they were spiritually separated from God. That's what spiritual death is because he's the, our source of life, spiritual life. So it separated them from God because now they're operating out of their human understanding, not from the word of God, because what they did was they rejected God's word when he said, don't eat from it. And they decided to listen to the voice of another, which we know is the deceiver. <clears throat> and so now they're in agreement with uh, the deceiver and they've awakened the sin nature. So there's a few things I want you to, to grasp from this. And I know that's a lot. I just dumped on you. But the knowledge of good and evil, knowing right and wrong, is not a good thing. It still brings death, spiritual death. It still separates us from God. And I could go into a long explanation of why that is so, but, I, but I'd rather you just kind of think about it yourself. Um, and I don't want this video to be too long. We're already at 11 minutes. So, um, but, but all we need to see here is a couple things. First of all, the knowledge of good and evil is what? caused the downfall of the entire human race. And God said, in the day you eat of it, you will die. And, and we know Adam and Eve were separated from God. So that knowing right and wrong still separates us from God. <clears throat> and um, and what it, it, the other thing it does is it awakens our sin nature. 
So what we're doing is we're teaching our children right and wrong, expecting it to bring life when God said it will bring death, and we're awakening their sin nature. And so what we're doing is causing the problems we're trying to solve. So that's what I want you to get from this video is that teaching our kids right and wrong is not the goal of parenting. In fact, it is the deadly fruit that brings spiritual death and it still brings spiritual death. And statistically, we can see that because children raised in Christian homes where that's pretty much the paradigm that we're, or the, or the, the, the uh, perspective that we parent from is that we teach them right and wrong, right? We tell them what to do. If they don't do it, we punish them thinking that after so many repetitions that they will learn to choose what we say and, um, and it doesn't work. So, <clears throat> so that, that's what I want you to learn right now is that teaching right and wrong is not effective. It's not the goal. It's actually destructive and it's sabotaging all of our best intentions. And so in this series, you're going to learn what is the goal of parenting. If we don't teach your kids right and wrong, then what is it? What do we do? And so we're going to talk about that in the next video. Uh, but, but for now, um, please spend some time, read over that, that passage in Genesis and just ask the Lord to show you. Uh, and just because I want you to understand you to get this mindset shift. That, that, that you can't be focused on this. It's not healthy. It's not good. It's deadly. It's the deadly poison fruit when you teach your kids right and wrong. Uh, and that's, we've been tricked just like Adam and Eve or Eve was uh, tricked into believing that it sounded like a good idea. Sure does sound like a good idea, but it's not. So don't fall for the same trap Eve fell for because we are perpetuating Satan's work for him and that makes me pretty angry. And so I'm out to stop this and to educate Christian parents on what their role is. And when you hear what I'm going to give you some powerful, powerful tools in the, in this series, that's going to, you'll be able to equip your even newborn baby with a foundation, a solid foundation of knowing and loving and serving God all the days of his life. Because doesn't the scriptures tell us that when we train our children in the way they should go, that even when they're old, they won't depart from it. So that's what I'm saying about pay, pay now or pay later. If you do the things I'm going to teach you in this series, you will your work will be 99.9% .9 done for the rest of your child's life. It's that incredibly powerful. So I can't wait to share more with you. I'm going to end this video now. It's already too long. Can't wait. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, God bless. Take care.